The Shift, two versions of it, by Gary Lovisi and by Lucille Lovisi. Hi, I happen to be the first one, Gary Lovisi. And um, a little while ago, a friend of ours who was a vegetarian, we went out to um, have dinner with him, and uh, he was talking about how he's a vegetarian and uh, all that that means. And I was saying, of course, that I'm being a carnivorous person. I like to eat meat. And um, so we got into this discussion, kidding around and, you know, and uh, he says, well, you know, when the an all the animals, uh, eventually they're going to get, get, uh, they take over. They can take over and they're going to get after us for eating them, which uh, I said, no, it's not, never going to happen. And uh, we had a nice evening, and then we went home. And uh, the next day, Lucille and I were thinking about that and talking about it. And she happened to write a little, uh, like a, a, a four or five paragraph introduction for a story. And then she went out. And then I, I looked at what she wrote, and I says, hey, you know, I'm going to finish well, the story. Well, because I thought it would be a good idea to write him a story about the animals about that, taking the over. the animals taking over. So I wrote... It was called the shift, and uh, where where everything shifts and animals take over, and uh, so I wrote my version of it. And then when she came home, she looked at it and she couldn't stand it because she says it wasn't. She hated it. I didn't hate it. It's not what I envisioned in my head. Well, I couldn't crawl into your head to to figure <laughs> no. out what you what you wanted to do. So anyway, she couldn't. I couldn't envision what was in her head, and so she envisioned her own. Uh, idea of the story from her from within her own head and she has her own version of the shift so there's a shift the original and the shift the alternate and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the booklets that we the little book that she made with the artwork for each one and I'm going to read the short little story of well, each and we, you should say we gave him the story and we gave, gave him, him we gave him both stories both of the versions of the story and then we're going to let you uh, YouTube viewers, um, comment and see which, let us know which story you liked best and why. So we made two little booklets and the first one is the original shift. So I'm going to go that, that's Lucille made the cover. She made it like an EC comic and we, she did a little thing here about in each one, the wild creatures ruled the earth and humanity is on the brink of extinction. All hope falls upon Joe. Who can save, can, can, can he save it? Find out in this new thrilling adventure edition of The Shift, coming soon to a not so fine bookstore near you. And we made five copies numbered. And, um, and now I'm going to read the original Shift. It's been 40 years since the great shift. How far things had come, though, was difficult, even for Joe to believe. He was, after all, one of the good ones, a forefather of sorts. He always knew what was right, but for now, for the first time since all this began, Joe doubted himself. How did things go so wrong? How could they do what they were doing? Some might consider this justice in some sick and twisted way. Certainly Joe joked about it. He predicted it, even wished for it. But even in his wildest dreams, he never could have imagined it would be like this, that they would be like this. Deep down inside, he just knew that they would be better than us. But it was not to be. Their cruelty had no bounds. Now Joe felt obligated to fix things. He was, after all, partially responsible for all this. Now he wanted revenge against those creatures, the beasts of the field and the air, who had been wronged, but now had changed things so drastically or dramatically. For now, the animals ruled, and man and women were left to fight for their own survival in a world that had gone upside down. It had never been so in the past, but now this was the new reality, a reality that Joe, after so many years, could barely contemplate. He, like many others, had love for animals of all types and refused to eat the flesh, now that they had taken over, so many of them carnivores themselves partook of the flesh of humans. Joe was alone and hunted by the large cats who prowled the ruins of the old cities long ago obliterated. 
He had banded together with a motley assortment of leftover humans, former meat eaters, vegetarians, vegans, and starvers whose bulimic and anorexic beliefs tended not to allow them long life. It did not matter, for the few hum humans left were now the hunted, and it was up to Joe to make some kind of communication with the beasts. He tried with the big cats. They were the most vicious and dangerous, but they led the others. Joe had always had a fondness for felines, but those had been his pet, domestic variety, not these ravenous monsters. The king was lounging upon a high boulder while his pride of young females brought in meat and red flesh for them and the little ones. So many little ones and always so hungry. Well, they had to grow and the king only hoped that the supply of humans would not run out for that would be in trouble for his subjects. Already many of the once abundant, abundant race of man had become less and less. Joe boldly approached the king. He was terrified, but fear did not stop him from doing what he needed to do. He welcomed it. Why, king, do you kill and eat my people? He asked the fierce beast. The king of the cats looked at the puny man in front of him and licked his lips and said, Why didst thou devour the flesh of all the animals? Did you not think we had feelings? Could feel pain? Joe hardly knew what to say. I did, but too many of my people did not. That is not the point, the king chided. You accuse me of the very crimes against nature that your people have performed against us for so long. Joe could, not, could only nod in agreement. The king licked his lips, looked at the young man and said, at least you are honest. I do not think I shall eat you today. Now go away and good luck to you. Joe had soon gone away, and the king of the beasts stretched out leisurely. Life was good. It was a shame that things could not be worked out between the man and the beasts, but that is just the way it was. The king's attention was drawn by a young lioness who had just made a fresh kill. Ah, fresh meat. Bring that tasty morsel to me, for I am mighty hungry. All this thinking causes a great king to build up quite an appetite. And that's the shift, the original. And then Lucille wrote a, another version, which is rather than a, 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 a fantasy story, it's a terror horror story. This is the alternate version. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To start off exactly the same. Because he... Yes, the first couple, two pages, He expanded little pages. on the original... Yeah, so the, first, uh, so the first four or five par uh, paragraphs are the same. It's been 40 years since the great shift. How far things had come, though, was difficult, even for Joe to believe. He was, after all, one of the good ones, a forefather of sorts. He always knew what was right. But for now, for the first time since all this began, Joe doubted himself. How did things go so wrong? How could they do what they were doing? Some might consider this justice in some sick and twisted way. Certainly, Joe joked about it. He predicted it, even wished for it. But even in his wildest dreams, he never could have imagined it would be like this, that they would be like this. Deep down inside, he just knew that they would be better than us. But it was not to be. Their cruelty held no bounds, and neither did their appetites for it. I guess that shocked Joe the most. I guess what shocked Joe the most was their attitude toward him. In the years leading up to the original shift, Joe had been a self-appointed liaison between them and his kind. He wrote about what was happening, but with all sympathies placed on them. He even considered them trusted friends. But that was then, and now he couldn't believe how far he had fallen from their graces. The ranchers who were the first to go, followed by the poulterers and the commercial fishermen, Joe was a able to find the justifications in all of those atrocities with ease. Enthusiastically, he pointing out in his articles all the opposition and hypocr hypocrisies. What he could not justify, however, was when the family pet attacks began. These animals were different. They really didn't have such a bad life. They were for the most part loved and well cared for by humans. It was a much harder sell for Joe, but sell it he did. That was in toll. Sometime that fateful winter, he couldn't even be sure of the year at this point. His partner had been away for a while, 
She hated the snow and especially walking the dog in it and needed a weather break. She had returned home early that day, unannounced. She wanted to surprise Joe and surprise him she certainly did. She would never be able to get the image of what she, uh, he, Joe would never be able to get the images of what he found out out of his head. The blood was everywhere. Carnage and savagery, savagery like he never had never seen. It took a moment for him to comprehend what was happening, even though it was happening as he watched. That was before they noticed him. Now Joe knew he had to stay alert for around every corner. Danger was waiting for him. And while the world was full of uncertainty, Joe was certain of just one thing. Danger was going to find him. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a long wait, as it turned out. Once he came to, he could hear them panting and snarling. The others were busy running around the field, apparently looking for a way out. It was hopeless, though. There was an electrified fence around the field preventing anyone who tried to cross it. The, the ability to do so. Joe smiled to himself at the irony. Free-range people, he thought. Somehow this seemed much crueler. He was watching the terror as it was building up while everyone frantically ran around in circles, falling with each turn. Just then he felt himself being dragged and was unable to stop them. Hopelessness filled his soul as he was lifted in an instant by his ankles over an enormous vat. It was filled with the blood of every poor soul that had been there before him. Oh no, this cannot be happening. Then he saw the blade, a guillotine of sorts. Joe knew, now knew his fate. If only he saw this sooner, much sooner things could have been different. He thought his heart would burst out of his chest before the blade ever neared his neck. And then with one swift whoosh of the blade, Joe woke up. He was full of sweat and his heart still did feel as if it would burst out of his chest, but he was alive. Joe was thanking every spiritual being that he could think of for this great fortune. What a nightmare this subconscious mind was con had conjured up. But wait, something was terribly wrong. He couldn't move. Why couldn't he move? And that's when he saw them, all of them that he had loved, staring at him, snarling at him, circling him, licking his ankles, his arms and his face. This ordinarily wouldn't have alarmed him, but this time it was different. This time they were different. Joe now knew his reality would be more vicious than even his subconscious mind could have imagined. Yet even now, in these dire straits, the last thoughts that crossed Joe's mind were for them. Well, he thought, if I have to die this way, at least I died for them. The shift, the alternate version. What do you say? What do you think? <laughs> No, but you, you forgot to say that in yours, you took the writer's uh, the writer's position by making it the end of part one, because you had already yeah, figured I was, I you were going to write a, a sequel. Yeah. I ended it right there. I, yeah, you killed his dry. girlfriend, too, which uh, we shouldn't mention. <laughs> we should not mention. Uh, so it's good that nobody knows. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little look at the, you know, uh, we each wrote a, a little story kind of in our own uh, uh, mental mode of insanity, trying to figure out what, what, what we would do, a very individualistic kind of uh, uh, interpretations of a little, of a little story, and um, very quite different, actually. Uh, and uh, just curious if uh, any of you, I hope you all do like this video and uh, give us a thumbs up, but I hope you'll contact us and give us a, a little feedback on what you think of the video, what you think of the of the stories, which story and which story you liked best and why? That would be really, uh, really interesting to to know. And uh, with that, I salute you and uh, see you next video see with you a next, real video. See you next video with a real video. Yeah. <laughs>